Hello and welcome to or welcome back to a new video, depending on whether you are a subscriber or not. In this video I'm visiting an old creation and building a diorama for it, as well as turning very cheap plastic figures into somewhat proper ones to accompany this sci-fi fighter jet. Let's get to the build. So I brought out the old scratch build sci-fi fighter jet for this project. It's been sitting on a shelf collecting dust for the past 5 or so months. I brushed off the dust and stuff off of it and made sure that it doesn't need any fixing or painting over. For the base I started by cutting a styrofoam piece and a foam core piece to build the scene over. Kinda wanted to make a plain storage hangar but then changed my mind to make a scene where this plane was parked on an old or damaged rarely used tarmac or runway with some scatter objects like crates, covered up boxes and so on, some soldier figures investigating the plane and the military buggy which supposedly carried these soldiers. The hangar from original plan took longer time to achieve which is a luxury I have in short supply nowadays and doing so would hide many details of the plane. Anyway, so I carved some random lines over the foam core to create some sort of a beaten up cracked tarmac look. In order to create texture, I covered the majority of the flat shiny surface of the foam core with CA glue as usual. Then applied baking soda all over it to do the um, texture job. Painted it all with a stony tone mixture of grey. Applied a couple of lighter tones of grey and bone white color paints. I had these um, experimental washes I made a long time ago, whose recipe belongs to Bill from Bill Making Stuff by the way. Added some black to dry pastel in it to make it darker. Then applied it all over the surface, especially the cracks I made. I wanted them to really stand out. Took me about 4 or 5 applications before I was done with it. Once it fully dried, I applied some random color of battering powders all over the base to make it look even more dirtier. Once the diorama base is out of the way, I started working on making three crates. For those I utilized steering sticks and popsicle sticks. There isn't much explaining on what I do here, as I explained this process enough times in previous videos. But with the limited time I had, I could have maybe tackled these crates with using styrofoam or some else easier to work with materials. It took me an entire evening's time to make these three crates. As I mentioned before, time is now a precious commodity ever since I started working full time during the days. Once the crates are done, I made two dummy crates using these boxes. Calling them dummy because I am covering them up with tarp-like texture. Using toilet paper dunked in diluted PVA mixed with grayish green color paint. I intentionally tried to create creases and folds randomly to reflect a better tarp look over them. I didn't want to waste the leftover PVA glue and dunked some more toilet paper to make a separate tarp wrapped up and laying on the floor. Once they dried, I painted them with diluted army-ish green color with a couple of coats. Applied Vallejo black wash all over to get done with this. I primed the real crates with Vallejo gray surface primer as usual. Then painted them with mixtures of colors like medium flash tone. Sounds irrelevant, but I have a whole bottle of it which I don't use on figures as I find it too yellow to be applied on the figures. So I use that paint for different purposes. Apply the different variations of diluted paints as filters to differentiate different sections of each crate. And finish them up with diluted black wash in two applications. As for the figures of this diorama build, I'm using these very cheap 
almost army men, toy soldiers quality figures. I bought some of these to test to see if I could fix their mistakes and to see if they could be used in my projects with proper paint job. I filled some mold lines and such with millipot off the camera and added a backpack with the leftover millipot to one of them. Since I'm limited to work during the evenings or at late night, I can't use the Dremel to drill holes for the pegs anymore. So instead I drilled the holes with pinwise. Luckily the plastic used for these figures are quite soft so drilling didn't take much time. Prime them with Vallejo Grey Surface Primer in two coats. Once dried I started working on the actual paint job. I first wanted these guys to look like they belong to a special forces unit. Googled for it to get some reference, but as far as I could tell, most special forces units have black or dark grey tones of uniforms. So I decided to give them a tan like uniform. And since I don't have tan color paint, I mixed Vallejo Old Wood with medium flesh tone paints to get a desert tan like mixture. Applied two diluted coats of this mixture. Then painted their skin parts to have a visual idea about where the uniforms end and where their skin start. Added a bit of a Vallejo Green Brown into the paint mixture and painted over the previous layer of paint. Since I can't paint a camo pattern, this is my way to paint field uniforms. With a drop of dark grey paint into the paint mixture, I applied the final layer of paint of the uniforms. Painted their boots with Vallejo New Wood. Used the dark rubber color to paint the soles of their boots. Painted their backpacks, side bags, leg bags, water canteens, etc. with various mixtures of paints left over from the uniform color mixture. Painting the guns, at least the modern guns, are a bit boring. Since they are mostly unicolor, they don't have any wooden parts to differentiate the paint job. So, you can paint them in black and move on, really. In this case, I painted the guns with anthracite grey and touched with a lighter grey over some parts sticking out. While working with anthracite grey, I painted their goggles with it as well, as well as their chin straps. Two of the figures seem to have their gloves on, so painted them with old wood color to match their boots. One seems to hold the radio, so I painted it and its cord with anthracite grey. I was going to paint their straps with new wood as well, again to match the gloves and the boots, but decided to use light grey instead for a better looking detail. Applied the usual flash wash on their skin parts. I over diluted the wash on the first attempt. Then on the second one I used it directly without adding any water in it. Finally applied the usual black wash to bring up and exaggerate details all over their uniforms. Since there are so many creases and details over their uniforms, applying the black wash resulted pretty good. With the figures out of the way, I started working on the buggy as the last object of this build. I wanted to build a motor vehicle with tires, so this was a good start to practice. On my first attempt, my chassis ended up being too big for the wheel option I had. On the second attempt, which is this one, final result ended up being a little bit smaller in scale, but I kept on building it anyway. I found the best way to approach this for me to build a box, then keep adding extending bits to increase its length or width. 
For the wheels, I glued two circular jewelry bits together to make a front tire and three to make a rear tire. Once I made sure they are a good fit to the chassis, I used air drying clay to fill the uh, gaps in between each circular bit to make it look like an actual tire. With the tip of the hobby knife, I tried to make the lines matching the original ones on the jewelry bit. Once the clay dried, I sanded off the excess and exaggerated the lines with a file. Then I glued the whole tire assembly to the chassis. Next I started adding a pair of seats and a steering wheel using cardboard cutouts and circular jewelry bits. I used skewers to build the protective cage around this buggy. This was especially the hardest part as I didn't or didn't care to measure the angles of the adjoining parts of the cage and improvised each step of the build. Originally I wanted to add a machine gun in front of the second seat but didn't bother with it. Why? Because once I realized this was slightly off scale, I decided to consider this as a practice and finish it completely but not glue it to the diorama base once done. I'll most likely build a separate, more scale accurate one later and replace this with it. I'll make a video showing the process of it. So instead of the front seat machine gun, I built one to go above over top of the cage. Used Q-tip cutout, drilled holes around it to make it look more like machine gun barrel. Added random bits here and there to complete its assembly. I decided to attach sidebars on it, so made a couple with the same skewers I used for the rest of the cage. You can clearly see how off-scale this ended up being. If it was a centimeter wider, maybe like two centimeters longer and a centimeter higher, it would be more scale appropriate. Anyway, practice is practice. Primed it with Vallejo Black Surface Primer, already looks pretty good in black. Most reference images I looked at were black and very dark grey colors, but it's not going to be black obviously. So I wanted it to be close to the tan color as I did with the soldiers uniforms. Painted the first coat sloppily with a mixture of diluted Vallejo New Wood and medium flesh tone paints. While waiting for it to dry I painted the seats, the steering wheel, and the weapon with anthracit grey. Painted the tires with dark rubber paint. Then painted the whole body with a bit of a lesser diluted mixture of the same paints before. Painted the rims with the same color. I kinda wanted to keep them black but then changed my mind for no reason. Painted the front lights with Vallejo silver, rear lights with regular red. Then I applied a filter all over the original paint with watered down black red and the new wood to create a bit of a tint. Applied the watered down black wash to create depth and extra paint detail around certain parts as usual. Finally, added the mud dirt leg effect using dry pastel powders all over the lower part of the buggy and seal them with isopropyl alcohol. So it's time to put everything on the diorama base. I made some grass tufts of the camera in three different shades of green. I'll use them to add overgrown grass detail over the base later. I positioned the plane in an asymmetrical position. Then placed the dummy crates and real ones all across the base. Trying to achieve a look like they were transported here, next to the plane, containing parts or ammo to be used for the plane, instead of plane landed right in between the crates. The one soldier using the radio, I wanted him to be close to the plane, as if he's reporting his findings to his superior back at the base after his inspection. 
Place the one with the crouching posture on the back side as if he is guarding the air six. And the last one that is actually supposed to be running looked like he would be jumping off the wing. So I placed him on the left wing. I placed all the grass dots I made randomly here and there. There could have been more to add in regards to foliage like longer stem grass and vegetation or dried plants etc. But completing this project and its video took me longer than I anticipated. But I didn't want to keep you waiting for another week. And finally the Bucky. As I mentioned before, I will most most likely make a slightly bigger and scale appropriate one so i'm not gluing this on the base it was good practice for me and hopefully was an inspiration for you to make a vehicle with tires for yourself that's all for this video i hope you enjoyed it and hope it was worth the wait for those who are subscribed make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and make sure to hit the bell for my future upload notifications and as usual, like this video if you did, and share your opinions and ideas down in the comments section. I'll see you all in the next one, bye bye.